Hello everyone. Welcome to MedBuddy. Today we will study about myopathies. Before starting myopathies, we should know the difference between anterior horn cell disease and the muscle disease. Anterior horn cells is element disorder. Muscle disease is also lower motor neuron type of features. The difference between the two is when there is involvement of anterior horn cell, then there is usually asymmetry. Muscle disease, myopathies usually are bilaterally symmetrical. Then in case of anterior horn cell, there is no nerve supply to the muscle. So there will be wasting more than weakness. But when there is non-functional muscle, then weakness will be more than wasting. In case of anterior horn cell, the involvement is usually distal more than proximal. But in case of muscle disease, the involvement is usually proximal more than distal. There are few exceptions, but usually the muscle weakness is proximal more than distal and lower limb more than upper limb. Uh, now talking about reflexes, as this is LMN lesion, reflexes will be absent. In case of muscle disease, initially reflexes will be present because neuromuscular junction is normal. But on uh, later stages, reflexes will be become absent. A particular feature of LMN is fasciculations. Fasciculation will be present when there is anterior horn cell lesion, but fasciculations are absent in case of muscle disease. So now we will discuss whenever there is a muscle disease, what are the symptoms associated with it? How will the patient present to you? There are some positive symptoms and there are some negative symptoms. Positive symptoms associated with muscle disease are myalgia, that is muscle pain, muscle cramps, Contracture formation, myotonia, paramyotonia, and myoglobinuria. Negative symptoms. Negative symptoms include weakness of the muscle, fatigue, and exercise intolerance. Fatigue after exercise. We will discuss each and every symptom sequence wise. First of all, the weakness. Weakness in muscle disease. This can be persistent weakness, and the weakness can be intermittent. Intermittent weakness like Channelopathies like hypokalemic periodic paralysis, hyperkalemic periodic paralysis in channelopathies. Okay, and then in case of metabolic disorder like hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypophosphatemia, hypercalcemia, in all these disorders, there can be weakness. But when the electrolyte abnormality is uh, normal, then the weakness will be no, will go then. Uh, Weakness in the muscle disease is usually proximal as we have discussed, proximal more than distal and usually lower limb more than upper. How will the patient present to you of muscle disease when there is weakness? When patient is having proximal lower extremity weakness, he will say that he is having difficulty in climbing the stair, then rising from a toilet seat and getting up from a squatting position. When there is proximal upper extremity weakness, then he will say that he is having difficulty in combing the hair and difficulty in lifting the object over the head. When there is distal upper extremity weakness, then we will having he will be having difficulty in buttoning unbuttoning of the shirt, difficulty in opening any jar, or uh, distal lower extremity weakness or slippage of slippers, tripping due to foot drop. Okay, this is all about weakness. Next symptom is fatigue. When patient is having fatigue and exercise intolerance. Okay, even after minimal of exercise, patient feel fatigue. But there will be no sensory and autonomic nervous system. And th these both usually indicate in inflammatory myopathy. Inflammatory myopathy. Okay. Then coming to the positive symptom. Myalgia. Myalgia is usually uncommon for myopathy. But it can occur in case of like inflammatory myopathy. Patient can complain of myalgia. There is a muscle cramps. Muscle cramps. This is also not a feature of myopathy usually, except in case of Duchenne's muscul muscular dystrophy. We will discuss there um, muscle cramps in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Usually, muscle cramps occur due to electrolyte imbalance, like when there is increased urea. In case of CKD patients, muscle cramps can be seen. In case of hyponatremia, 
in case of dehydration and uh, muscle cramp is also main feature in case of ALS amyotrophic lateral sclerosis when there are UMN plus LMN lesion the muscle cramps in muscle disorder is usually due to Duchenne's or Becker's muscular dystrophy so about muscle cramps common causes of muscle cramps are dehydration hyponatremia azotemia that is CKD patient okay and uh, then can be thyroid disorder myxedema then muscle cramp is a characteristic feature in case of ALS amyotrophic lateral sclerosis where there is UMN plus LMN lesion you know? there is muscle cramp is common in case of muscle disease if we are thinking the muscle cramp is happening then DMD and BMD Duchenne's and Becker's are the common causes then muscle contractures what are contractures contractures are similar to the cramps but they usually last longer and in mus muscle cramp versus muscle contracture muscle cramps when we will do easy then there will be increased EMG then there will be increased activity but in case of contracture EMG will be electrically silent normal and uh, duration is long contracture can be fixed or they can be exercised the bone fixed contracture 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 are seen in MRE Dreyfus muscular dystrophy okay these are fixed contracture like tender chylus uh, tendon fixed contracture of tender chylus this is MRE Dreyfus muscle dystrophy then exercise induced contractures are seen in exercise induced contracture are seen in glycolytic pathway disorders when whenever patient do exercise the contracture will increase usually contracture are rare in case of muscle disorder so two main causes of contracture you have to remember is emery diffuse muscle dystrophy where fixed contracture are present and glycolytic pathway disorder where exercise induced contractures are present then myotonia Myotonia is impaired relaxation of muscle when there is forceful voluntary contraction like during handshake patient will not will not be able to release the hand when patient tightly closes his eyelid then he will not be able to open his eyelid okay when patient forcefully voluntarily contract the muscle then there will be impaired relaxation of the muscle okay mechanism of myotonia is due to repetitive depolarization of muscle membrane okay when we do something forcefully contraction of the muscle then there will be repetitive depolarization of muscle membrane so it will be very difficult to relax that muscle most common involvement is of hands and eyelid myotonia we see in hands and eyelids okay then condition in which myotonia is seen one is as the name is suggest, suggesting myotonic dystrophy myotonic dystrophy or known as dystrophica myotonic myotonia next is myotonia congenita and next cause is hyperkalemic periodic paralysis in case of hyperkalemic periodic paralysis okay then other thing is paramyotonia actually myotonia improve with exercise paramyotonia worsen with exercise this is the difference between them. okay Paramyotonia worsen with exercise. Paramyotonia is seen in paramyotonia congenita. This is the only difference between the two. That paramyotonia worsen with exercise and myotonia improve with exercise. Okay. Then myoglobinuria can be present. So these are the main features. So we will revise these features. Symptom of muscle disease are divided into two: positive symptom and negative symptom. Positive symptom are myalgia usually less common muscle cramps we should remember the causes of muscle cramps common causes like dehydration hyponatremia azotemia in CKD patients and myxedema can be seen in ALS amyotrophic lateral sclerosis then Duchenne's and Becker's if uh, we are talking about myopathies then Duchenne's and Becker's muscular dystrophy are more common causes of muscle cramps then contracture contracture are usually rare and if contractures are present then we have to differentiate 
either it is fixed contracture or exercise induced contracture. If it is fixed contracture, then MRE brief first muscle dystrophy, and if this is uh, exercise induced contracture, then usually glycolytic pathway disorders. Okay, in the difference between muscle cramps and contracture are in muscle cramp EMG there will be increased disease activity, increased muscle activity in case of contractures, EMG will be silent and uh, duration will be longer of contracture. Then myotonia and paramyotonia, the difference between myotonia and paramyotonia is myotonia usually improve with exercise and paramyotonia worsen with exercise. And myotonia, side of both are common that is hands and eyelid. Myotonia causes are myotonic dystrophy, myotonia congenita and hyperkalemic periodic paralysis and paramyotonia causes paramyotonia congenita. Other is myoglobinuria can be present. In case of negative symptom, weakness, weakness can be persistent, it can be intermittent. Intermittent weakness is usually in case of like channelopathy, metabolic abnormality, but persistent weakness is like the myotonic dystrophy, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, Becker's muscular dystrophy and other congenital causes of dystrophies. Then fatigue and exercise intolerance usually seen in inflammatory myopathy, otherwise it is very rare. In the next video, we will discuss about the Duchenne's and Becker's muscular dystrophy. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel.